And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey folks, I'm Tom Vassell. Today we're taking a look at Century A New World, which is the third game in a trilogy of games. It started with Century Spice Roads and was followed up by Century Eastern Wonders and now we have the conclusion. Century Spice Road is one of the, my favorite games. Of, I'm amazed at how simple and fun that game is. Century Eastern Wonders, I liked the first game a little bit more, but was a nice follow up and you were able to combine the two of them into a third game. Well, now that they added this one, not only can you play Century A New World by itself, you can combine it with the first game or the second game or both, adding a total of four games plus the original three games. So now there are seven different games if you own all three of them. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to be reviewing Century New World as a game by itself. You don't have to have ever even seen the other games or played them. How does this game play? I'm going to be taking a look at the combination games, there's three of them, um, in another video, kind of giving a brief overview of those, so you can see what I think about those combo games. But let's take a look at just this one here, Century, A New World, in which you are going to be placing workers to get resources of different types, turning them into other resources to get points. Sounds like a lot of games that are out there, but take a look at this one and see where it's different. <laughs> There are four boards to put together to play Century New World. These three are always here, and the fourth one you can change and have some variety amongst it. Each player is going to get their own player board, when they're going to start with six workers of their color, and they'll also start with a certain number of cubes, depending on how many players are playing. There are different cubes in this game. Resources, we got corn, meat, tobacco, and fur. And corn is the most plentiful and is therefore the cheapest resource resource why fur is the best resource. On a player's turn, they have an action that they can take. This action can be place some of their workers onto a location or to pull them off of all the different locations. That's called resting. They would just pull them off. When you place workers on a location, you're simply going to look at the number that's there. So for example, here it takes one worker to go there. I'll go there and that gives me one red cube. Players will be storing cubes on their board on their turn, but you do have a limit of 10 cubes that you can keep. If I want to go to a spot that somebody else is on, I have to pay one more worker than the person who is there. So I could place two white workers to go here, and that would send the pink worker back to the player who has that. And again, I would get one meat. So most of the spots on the board, as you can see, are going to be giving you uh, cubes. These all give you cubes. This lets you upgrade a cube, letting you upgrade two yellows to two reds, or two greens to two browns, or a red to a green to a brown. And then there's spots over here where you can trade, turning in a red into three yellows, which in my case, I could turn in two reds to get six yellows. And so you can trade as many times as you want, and again, the cost is on all of these. Players can also place workers on the forts up here. When you place a worker on a fort, you can take the bonus tile that's attached to that fort, or if there's more than one of them, take one of those bonus tiles at the top of a stack, add this bonus tile to the bonus tiles in front of you. Notice you can only have three maximum bonus tiles, so once you're done, once you take the third one, you're stuck with those for the game. Players can also pay the resources there, so I could pay the red, green, and brown resource here and take the card. When you take a card, you'll place it in front of you. At the end of the game, players are going to get points equal to what's shown in the card, but they're also going to get a bonus on the card. There are four different types of bonuses. This particular bonus says whenever I go to a spot that shows a basket, I can pay one less worker. So for example here, at this spot here, it costs two. Now I can just put one worker there to get a green cube. Other spots say, if I go to a place that has corn symbol, I'll get an extra yellow cube. So if ever I go to this spot over here, instead of getting two yellow cubes, I'll get three. Some cards will give you extra workers, which you'll take from the supply and add. And then these are exploration. 
you can take one of the exploration tiles that was randomly seated on the board at the beginning of the game. So there's all sorts of exploration tiles that are out here, and a player might take this one, which gives them three victory points, or this one, which gives them a red and a green cube, or this one, which simply gives you a symbol, or uh, this one here, which would give you another worker. And as players remove these and take the bonuses, they're also opening up more spots that players can go to on the board. Whenever a card is taken from up here, the other cards slide over, a new card is flipped up from the top, and this is going to continue until one person has collected eight of these cards. At that point, everyone finishes out the round, everyone's going to count up their points. You're going to get points based on the bottoms of your cards. You'll look at the symbols you have, and a tile like this, for example, says for every C symbol, and that symbol there, you get three points. So I'll look through here, I got two and one. Uh, that's only three points total for me here because I only have one set of those two symbols. And then these two tiles I got, both say I get a point for every two workers. Let's say I got eight workers, that makes both of these worth four points. And I maybe, I took this tile and that's worth a bonus three points. I'll add my points together and whoever has the most points is the winner of the game. Now there is both good and bad for the components, mostly good. There's a nice tray here which you can put each of these cups in and store them from game to game and you put the board on top, it doesn't matter. The boards are a little thin. I, you know, I might have preferred them to be a little bit thicker. And they're also slightly busy. I wouldn't have minded if they had maybe dulled the colors of the trees here just a little bit so you could see what the spaces actually do a little bit better. And these workers are minuscule, really tiny workers. Um, so that being said, they do give you a bag that has one extra of all the resources in each of the people. The artwork is fine. The card quality is really good. Now I just showed you the base game. There are cards that will go in maybe other games besides the base game, so they have white stars or black stars on there. And each of the rule sets of this game, there are four different rule sets that come here, and each one shows you, so for example, this is the rule one that shows you Eastern Wonders plus a new world. This is all three games. Then we have this one here, which is the first game and the third game. This one, which is just Century. And then this particular thing shows you the different space, what they do, and this applies to all the games. So there's a lot of different things going on here, but it does very clearly tell you, you know, hey, with these, with these, you're going to use this side, A, or you'll use this side, B, if you're going to be playing one of the other games. And maybe for this one here, this is C2 or C1. And the rules for each game tell you exactly which one of these to use and sometimes which tiles to use. Like this is shows a one on it. This is used in number one game of the three combination games. The game is pretty clear about which components to components use when, but for the most part you use things like the cubes and the boards and the workers in every game. This game is very clearly inspired by Century uh, Spice Road. It has the same ideas of changing the cubes, getting cubes, and changing them. But it includes worker placement. Now, I'm already somebody who likes putting workers out on the board and getting actions. I especially like games that give you new spots to put them. So as this game explores, new spots open up. I especially like games where you can either put workers or pull workers, but someone can put more workers and possibly send them back so you go to a spot that maybe someone else will go to they send it back which helps you out and gives you a free turn I like that a lot I also like the engine building as you get these cards it's not a big engine but now in a, these spaces I pay one less to go to and when I go here I get an extra resource and here I pay one less to and get an extra resource to go to those spots there's some nice maneuvering in here and I think I like this game as much, if not slightly better, than Century Spice Road. Now, Century Spice Road, the first game, is still the easiest one to teach people, but this one is not that much far behind. The only confusing thing I think new people would have here are those bonus tiles. When you go to a spot, definitely take a bonus tile, right? Well, not quite. There's a uh, 2, 4, 6, 8, 11, 
15 of those tiles out there. So even in a four-player game, which is the max this game can handle, if you take three tiles each, there's still going to be three left over. So you might want to consider not taking every tile and just taking the ones that will help you more. And then do you go for cards that give you more workers, which means you have to take fewer turns pulling them back, or do you go for ones that give you that kind of engine building I mentioned earlier, or those exploration tiles, which can kind of, you get some good stuff, you can jump right in and grab another card. The game plays really smoothly, it's simple, it's easy, and spoiler alert, the combination games with the other ones are pretty good too, although you'll want to check out the video for that. So you say, Tom, I've never played any of these other games. Why should I get this one over other worker placement games? Well, one, it's very quick, it's very fast. I like how simple it is, and even though um, in my mind I kind of scorn the idea of change yellows to reds, and reds to greens, and greens to blues, uh, 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 greens to brown, sorry. You know, I have that kind of, huh, it's so... You know, whatever, it's just there's no theme. Yeah, there is no theme in this game. But because turns are so fast, I put some workers out, do that. What the, oh, it's my turn again? Okay, I'm gonna pull my workers back. Now what, oh, it's my turn again? That's what makes the Century Games really on fire and really on point. And this one is easily, in my opinion, superior to the second game because of that, because it brings back that speed a little bit. And <laughs> you buy this, you get not only this game, but the possibility of combining it and making four other games, which I think is pretty astounding myself. So, very, very much a fan of Century New World. It is a fantastic addition to the series. I could say a fantastic conclusion, because I don't think we want to see a fourth game that adds another five, com I don't know, just too many combinations at that point. This is good. So, and you'll say, what if I only want one of these games? Are you going to play with people who don't play a lot of games? Then get Century Spice Road. But if you're looking for sheer gameness, I think this one is the best so far. Dice Tower Judgment, excellent!